every serious genocide, mass killings, tribal clashes, ethnic cleansing has always been led by using words to dehumanize a people. NCIC has released a list of words it says amount to hate speech and banned their use. Terms and heavily coded messages that can be used to incite hatred. Coded, 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 coded. Personalities, spectacle, insults. For the longest time, we've been like that. It's personality driven. Politics is a business of power and influence. Asubui, siyasa. Sasita, siyasa. Jioni, siyasa. Naimbe chamuka Nairobi. Every five years, the general elections in Kenya are preceded by heated campaigns with politicians striving to popularize and market themselves to the voters. More often than not, it is not enough to know just what to say. How they say it counts big time. They are looking for ways to make it as spicy as possible as attractive as possible, while on the other hand, unfortunately, they try to make their opponents look as bad as possible. It's a six month. Na hiyo maneno unasema ya kwamba sujatimiza wajibu wangu, ulesikia wapi? Ulesikia wapi? But if Kenya's political history is anything to go by, then remarks by politicians cannot be ignored. Is what they say and what they don't say. Okay? Is what they say, which you think they are saying something, which other people know exactly what they are saying. It's like Nakwambia Kitu Batsikwambi. Nobody can stop reggae. Nobody can stop reggae. That's telling you. By the way, Akuna Kitum Tadu. But it's soft. It's, you know, they all use codes. Asubui, siyasa. Hata ni kimweta kimondo. Sasa raida ameacha kuwa kimutu. Saa sita, siyasa. Nobody can stop. Eke. Wakanisa utafuruswa. Jioni, siyasa. Tumine kiyangu yote. Amen. Almost trying to show, you know we can do without these people. Kati wana yulikana. Wale walikuwa nanunua maidi kutoka Mexico. Wale gula. Women should not compete for our spaces. So when you are unbogable, you're not scared. <laughs>
uh, the M in masses is silent when it comes to politics. Because people don't want to interrogate. People want to be critical thinkers. What are you saying? We like those exact, those buzzwords. We like them. It's a, it's a two-way street. You know, sometimes we blame the politician. We forget the audience. They will not be engaging in that if the audience did not like that. Take one. Me here to secure the bag. Nothing else, man. Me if you securing the bag for me and my body. Nobody can stop reggae. Not even body. Enemies, come around, check it out. The language that people understand, it's more expressive. So for me, satire comes out as, one, it's beautiful. I love playing with words. Timothy Kimani, popularly known as Jugush, is a Kenyan comedian and influencer. When I got into comedy, I, 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 I always wanted, or it's always been in me, whatever I do, have a moral uh, impact, so to speak. Like, what do you stand for? Through satire, and Jigush has grasped the art of addressing social and political issues. You can buy our album, latest album. Haina kitu. Sorry? Haina kitu. What you say? It's because it's blank CD, man. We not have nothing, man. All 10 years, we not do nothing, man. No song, nothing. Just vibes and... If you know, you know. It was easy to do that because half the work has already been done by the politicians. Niko hii Kenya, kila mtu wana feel, kila na feel. So if I talk, unajua na ongea ukweli, but there's something you're not doing. Jigush not only understands how effective hidden messaging is in communication, he also knows how powerful a tool it can be. Hata ni kimweta kimondo, nation leo mumesema, is a bully. That is what the man is, a bully. Sasa Raida hameacha kuwa kimutu. Hamekua mze, ambaya hameketi chini. For example, I heard someone say, uh, to Kohapa, they were in Kisumu, to, uh, no, they were in Central Province, and they said, we are here, but they are our people. In Kisumu, they are our people in Rift Valley. So be careful what you decide. It, it looks like it's subtle, but if you really think about it, they are talking about, those people might be in problem. Today, Ntakam ni seme hivi. Kesho ndakamu niseme hivi. Ndakamu niseme yapa madoa doa. Madoa doa is the same na hile ya iyo ni metoka kusema ya watu enyu wako county zingine kama watakuwa safe. It's the same. Unatisho na safety ya watu enyu unona hee. Enye let's settle for less but we have peace. In other words, what he's saying is that the value Kenyans attach to political remarks, negative ones especially, and how willing they are to go along with what is said without interrogating it, has a great impact. When language is used that way, it really influences uh, people negatively because now they stop looking at their neighbors as neighbors. They see them as unwanted people. Uh, you know, if it's Madoadoa, really, it's not the dominant group. It's almost trying to show, you know, we can do without these people. If they're talking about kwekwe, you know, weeds, Comparing a person to a, a, a weed, something that grows where it's not wanted, means it can be uprooted, it's not needed here. They're dehumanized to plants, they're dehumanized to things, they're dehumanized, and, and therefore if this person were to hurt this person, to them they're not hurting a fellow human being, it's like they're hurting Kwekwe. Every serious genocide, mass killings, has always been led by using words to dehumanize a people. We must cut the tall trees. Cut the tall trees now! It's time to clear the brush, good Hutus of Rwanda. Baka saai, spendi mamba ya siyasa. Na chukia sana. Kama saai vile nasikia oo, awa na vulutana uku uku. Siski vizuri. Ya, inafanya na anza kukumbuka na kuwa muwaga. 
At the height of the 2007 election, pitting then incumbent Mwai Kibaki against opposition candidate Raila Odinga, over 30 people were burnt alive in Kiamba Church, just a few kilometers from Eldoret Town. Kiamba village was mostly populated by members of the Kikuyu community. Philip Kimunya is one of the survivors of the KAG Kiamba Church fire. He may or may not be a familiar face, but his mother probably is. <laughs> Philip is the son of Elizabeth Wangoi. This picture of his mother wailing outside the burning Kenya Assemblies of God Church in Kiamba, where he and many others were in, became the face of one of the darkest seasons in Kenya's history. <laughs> The disputed elections of 2007 led to a series of protests and violence that led to the death and displacement of many Kenyans. But at the center of it all were inflammatory messages used to divide and incite people along tribal lines. So wali tuzunguka hapa tukaambiwa na wazazi tutoroke kwa nyumba ya Mungu tukitolea kwa nyumba ya Mungu hakuna kitu inaweza tufanyikia sasa sisi wote area hii tukakimbilia mahali pamoja wakati tuliingia wale wakaremea wenye walikuwa nje wanatudefend ikabidi wakuje baka kwa kanisa ndani sasa hapo ndio penye waliashia moto kwa mlango sasa mimi niliweza kuponyoka kupitia dirisha. Sasa sasa hapa ndio KG Church Kenya Assembly of God hapa ndio tuliungulia kanisa ilikuwa hapa mlango ilikuwa hapa. Mimi niliweza kufanyokea kwa hiyo Cyprus katoka upande wa nje kutoka upande wa nje kapigwa lingu ya mgongo na kofi ya panga. Ndio ni akili ka, ikafunguka haya. Ndio <laughs> nikaweza kufanyokea kwa waya katoroka. Philip was only 14 years old. Today, he is 31, a husband and a father of two. This moment here, picture perfect, right? Their reality though is a different story. Beyond the gentleness of their smiles lies a lot of unhealed wounds and unspoken pain. Saka mimi saa hii kwa kibaru wa nafanya, kuna kazi siwezi fanya ngumu ngumu. Philip may have survived the fire, but the life he had always known died on that fateful day. Between homelessness, the serious burns on his body, and the trauma of seeing his people burn alive, shifted his life forever. Over the years, Kenya has experienced a number of ethnic conflicts fueled mainly by political statements. But in spite of the fact that politicians are at the front line of this mess, it's the ordinary Kenyan like Philip who suffers the most. The problem that we have is, let us be honest, um, 70 to 80 percent of, of voters in the world, not in Kenya, in the world, are politically illiterate. <laughs> and therefore, most of the time we are gullible in terms of, uh, of being incited to vote in a certain way. This kasumba that uh, people have been given that uh, during election we must now start profiling people and fighting them. It's a kasumba that started in 1991 when we introduced multipartism and therefore we started some ethnic cleansing. Eh? 
displacements just to make sure that our area we, we, we get uh, uniformity in terms of the voting patterns. It's said that for the poorest and most vulnerable, the difference that good or particularly bad governance makes to their lives is profound. Nothing could be further from the truth. Fifteen years later, Philip is still paying the price. While time is said to heal all wounds, for some people the wounds don't go away. They stay buried deep inside. That was Elizabeth's story. depression the memories of the horror she witnessed in Kiamba Church scarred her for life. For over a decade, Elizabeth was alive, but she never lived. <laughs> wakati nilishinda kumpeleka hospitali na hmm? mimi nika nao mkoa wa Zambia mimi sasa yeye nimejaribu na nimeshindwa dakika ya mwisho wana kijiji hapa wa majirani wakaniambia kuliko akufie kwa nyumba ili tumpeleke hospitali ili hmm? tunanganange na mabills na kuchanga na nini ili aweze kutoka lakini wakati alienda <coughs> hakuweza kurudi alirudi akiwa ameaga in 2019, the curtains finally came down on Elizabeth's insufferable life. She was 84 years old. Mama, to the Mutumuzisha, Sisi kama viongozi, we have your best interest at heart. Sasa mta tusaidia kivipi? Nitauliza mamu, lakini chamuno ni kuamba, hii Kenya tukona pesa nyingi sana. Ndiyo mana hata zingine zikipotea, bado tunafanya hii mambo. Kama hii mambo sasa tutairound, hii bibi nini, tunairound tena, inarudicho, tunaverekia committee nipe. I think it's very important for people and the audience and the voters at large to really understand what's being said. If you look at political history of this country, they just change the language. They've been together. There is a time all these people antagonizing each other Akina Mudavadi, Akina Ruto, Akina Uhuru, Raila were in the same team. You cannot believe. Waliku are the same. Sasa hiwa metawanyika. Then after 10 years, tena watatawanyika tena. You cannot believe we are talking about Uhuru, not talking to Ruto. Na hao ndi walikuwa na vaa, tai ziko the same. In their quest for power and votes, politicians have proved that they are willing to go to any extent. Si Uhuru ni yali kwa natuambia language ya Muguruki, ya muenda wazimu. <laughs> Who was saying is Muguruki? Is Mwenda Wazimu? Look at Muguruki, look at Mwenda Wazimu. They are very together. They use that language to their advantage. I'll call him Muguruki so that you hate him. And if you ask why you hate Raila, you don't know. I don't know. You don't know? You don't know? Why don't we see how they use their language to their advantage? Na sisi tutumie iyo luga tuseme. This time, ni kama tutachagule tunataka. If we realized what language can do to us, I think that will be the changing point. Although Kenyan's ethnic violence can be attributed to political manipulation, why have Kenyans not united in the rejection of divisive politics? The political class have managed to poison the Kenyan population depending on where that politician comes from. And uh, there are certain narratives that have been passed for quite some time that now appears the gospel truth. And this is about power, uh, resources, and marginalization. People during electioneering period 
start revisiting some of their perceived historical injustices or marginalization. And normally those narratives are associated with certain communities with the power. And therefore, the population have been conditioned to think that if this community gets power, we are going to suffer. If this community gets power, we are going to be marginalized. The NCIC is what we call an Agenda 4 Commission. In the Agenda 4, during 07 or 08 violence, we were supposed to address long-term issues. What really caused, what we call the root causes of violence. One was high unemployment, inequality, economic issues. Have, we, have those things really changed? Inequality is still the same. Unemployment is still high, is the same, if not higher than 1 or 07 or 08 in terms of ratio. So the real underlying issue is not addressed as, 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 as a country. Yet they are telling you they will address it. They haven't addressed it. In six months' time, the stadium in Wote will be complete. Alternative leadership tailored to the needs of the people has been sold election after election. But the validity of these promises, though, is a different tale. What we often don't see is how destructive a tool these kind of politics can be against national integration as well as the development of a country. Healing, it, it will take time for healing to take place. Because I don't know, I don't know if I can do it. 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 Since the reintroduction of multi-partism in 1992, three of the five elections have been wrecked by major ethnic disputes. Patrick Gedenji has been a victim of all of them. The Lianza displacement was in 1992. It was in the city of 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 the city kachomewa mali yetu ikavunika ikaharibiwa wakati wa vita 1997 so tukavurishwa tena tukakuja more ten tau 205 pia ikatokea vita nyingine na pia hiyo ikatoa watu zaidi kwa sababu kulikuwa na vita wakati wa referendum ya 2005 na wakati wa referendum kuja ikakuwa vita baina ya communities so finally 207 ikatotoa huko na ikakuwa ile kali na tukafika hapa in a strange twist of fate, his life of loss, struggle and sacrifice would eventually give him a purpose, to fight for the rights of his people. I'm the national chairman of the National IDP Network. Shirika ambalo linatetea waadhiriwa wa ndani kwa ndani katika ngazi zote za kitaifa. We have over 4 million victims of internal displacement, both the post election violence and other displacement. As a victim and a leader, Patrick understands all too well how political rhetoric works from both divides and its impact in society. Unajua is very painful wakati unapata story kama hizo statement kama hizo. Very painful because they don't have community at heart. Wala watu vile wanafanya ni kwamba hawa nangalia interest yao. Unajua wala wana community, hawa politician, hawa readers wetu is very paramount. Hawa wako na lalu kubwa sana. Na wakati unapigana huwa ndia huwa wamekua wana insight. Sama kama wamekua sana huku, sisi huwa ndia tumekua la recipient hapa, mashinani. Suwezi ni kafikia uhuru, ni mpige. Suwezi nikafikia laiga. Hmm? Suwezi nikafikia wale, 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 wale mabalini wako town, wako na maduka na nini. So the only person ambayo na waza lupisha, na waza piga, ndiyo huri ama mingine asikie, I will attack my neighbor who is supporting the other side. Ndiyo huri asikie viba. viba. Politically motivated remarks can lead to different outcomes, positive or negative. However, it's the interpretation of these messages by the people that really determines the impact it has on a country and its people. I 
hizi vita zitaisha. Tukikaa na amani na vijana tushikane na wamama tushikane na tuendeleshe watoto wetu. Tuwaambie hii na hii usishike vita itaisha. Joyce Chepkemoi has made it her mission to remind Kenyans of the importance of peace through her story. She too was a victim of the 2007 violence. Kidogo nilikuwa ni ndaya. Juu nilikuwa nasikia tu vitu vijana wanavyosema maneno wanasema fulani kisira kitu kapigana. Kwa nini mama bado mnalia? Mimi bado nasikia uchungu kwa mimi yangu. Kwa nini sisi wa mama tena mnaguzia wa mama? Wanama sisi tukiwa na watoto wadogo na vita imeingia tunashitana na watoto atutaki vita kabisa kabisa kwa maana mimi nilionia Joyce did not always look like this her attackers did that to her and though she survived the horrifying ordeal she lost her husband and her home si wanjui ilikuwa ni watu sijui ilikuwa ni vijana vijana tu sikuwa ni njua njua tena chao ilikuwa ni nyekundu kabisa kama ni moto alikuwa ni zani nyekundu hiyo mimi na kupigana ni chuki yani kitu yenye kichu yani kenye yesu kumbuka yesu sema hata tukapigana ni nini lakini kichu siku hiyo alikuwa anasema mimi atazika preste ni lazima tupigane yani kuna nini ya kiti ndio ni kiti yani wachafuku ndaya si wa mama tu kwa wa mama wa kuheshuka na nini wase mkuu wa kuheshuka na nini jana mkuu wa kuheshuka Sinyim na sema ngao I won't vote it won't change na sasa iko nini mnafanya hashtag will it change Mtu mzuri akuja simama na independent hamumwangalii mara mbili kwa ni hana mrengo hana kala sasa mnawapiga yanga kala eh blue na yellow Politicians come and go. Also sisi come and go, but bottom line is do we need for people to die? You're not supposed to lose your livelihood over politics. You're not supposed to lose your family. Tukioku Kamulu, I saw a family move walikuwa wanaishi Kibera and they had nyumba kadhaa za kukombolesha. They came with two bags. A family of six people. They came with two bags. That's all they had left. They came to start a new life. While come and plot yuko, but they had nothing else. It's 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 ugly. When when we think of such cases, and then you see someone ameshtakiwa juu ya madoa doa, alafu mnaenda kwa barabara kuinua twigs. I think unless you are very near where such things were happening is the only time you can be able to do that. Following the disputed election in 2007-2008, Kenya has made some efforts in initiating a number of reforms geared towards fostering national unity. One of the outcomes was the National Cohesion and Integration Act that criminalizes hate speech. When a country is peaceful, it's because of the effort which we have done. It's not peace is not automatic especially in this part of the world especially in, in certain regions of this country. It's, as we speak right now, we have close to 483 cases. Okay? Uh, there is 88 cases specifically for online incitement. Actually, the worst part actually is online incitement. If you had to ask me, the real threat to our country as far as cohesion and peace is concerned. Our work, for the most part, actually is preventive. It's behind the scenes. We're in conflict zones. We're in hotspots. Um, trying to get we mediate, we conciliate. The history of incitement to ethnic hatred in Kenya has been a long and painful one. Despite the trail of destruction it has caused, NCIC has been criticized over its failure to prosecute offenders. So to suggest that because one person in a year, in a political season, said something they're not supposed to say, that the NCIC is not working, that's a, that's a fallacy. You're missing the point. We've pre prevented 99.9% .9 of the people, and you're engaging them. They're doing the right thing. There's a challenge within the judiciary, and, and I want to blame them because of the backlogs. Right now, we have cases that have been on court for five years. What's the backlog? I arrest a politician today. It will take five years for that case to be heard and determined. Then that's why we we talked. We had a meeting with the, the new chief justice, Batakomi, Honorable Batakomi, and and that's why we came up with this idea and agreement with the judiciary that we explain to them some of these cases are very sensitive and they can be very explosive. We have five courts 
that are being set up this month to hear hate speech cases and sexual related violence. That's it. That's their work. So that became first track issues. The challenge is notwithstanding, the law is there and it works sometimes. That age, yes, I was young. Still vocal, radicals. Can say anything because you feel like you are the owners of the country, you have every right to say anything. But when the law comes for you now, you are alone. Alan Wadi, alias Lieutenant Wadi, became the first Kenyan to be convicted of hate speech related charges. Remember in 2014, December, we had a security law which was uh, prohibiting citizens from airing their views on also sensitive issues containing, which was like curtailing the freedom of speech. It was passed around on 18th of December. That's what triggered me, and that's what made me be very bitter when we posted matters on the insecurity and issues pertaining the ills of the country then. That's what now they decided to follow me and arrest me on charges of incitement to it and uh, undermining the public officer. At the time of his arrest eight years ago, Alan was 25 years old and a political science student at Moi University. He was sentenced to two years in jail over his social media posts. There's a, hu a human being who protects the country. I accept it because I believe in being honest. I'm not one person who runs away from their errors. I do the mess, I accept the mess. Or if I was, if I am right, I will always stand by my stand. And that's why I accepted and I was jailed for two years, though we appealed because the sentence was not uh, right. So we appealed and I, I, I was acquitted. Wadi, the university student who was jailed for two years for insulting President Uhuru Kenyatta on social media, is a free man. Wadi was freed after a successful appeal. It was not easy because I was isolated from other inmates. I was self-confined, I can say so. So it was not easy. Freedom is sweet. That's what someone lacks when in prison. Freedom is sweet. Social media has had a huge impact and influence in shaping culture, politics, businesses, and so much more. But this platform has also been used and abused to promote social ills. Hate speech is one of them. The majority of these young men, most of people, these young ones who are known online, online writers, they actually sponsor to write so that they, they pay, they are paid. But when they do that, they have to know the course they are taking. We should know how to handle those issues because as youths, we know we have everything. We think we own the world and we have a right to say, but in, in future, we, we realize now the same rights we had are now the ones haunting us. Though Wadi is a free man, released six months after being jailed, the consequences of his arrest are still evident in his life today. His advice? The outside here. You have strained even to get to be employed. Everyone runs away from you. They don't want you. So it's only realize that he was right, but now life is no longer as you expected. Freedom of speech, what I really care about, it has also limits. Being having freedom of speech doesn't have to hit, to injure somebody else. It has to be within the limit. When the public is informed well enough, if we realize what language can do to us. When we begin to question and interrogate issues for what they are. When we stop listening and start understanding the intent behind political discourse, maybe then we will get the change that we so badly seek. They don't have community at heart. It's like nakwambia kitu but And if we learn nothing else from this story, May we learn people power.